Vika emigrated to the United States with her husband and two young children. Her husband, who knew English significantly better, was already working. She enrolled her older child in first grade at a school around the corner, while the three-year-old stayed home with her as she tried to find a job. Vika had a wealth of experience, she had worked as a financial director at a medical institute for ten years. Because her close relatives had moved to Israel, and Vika maintained correspondence with them, the KGB constantly kept her under surveillance. They conducted audits on her regularly, hoping to find something incriminating to imprison her, but despite their efforts, they never found anything. As a result, the staff told legends about Vika and called her the financial god. She was respected and loved for her professionalism, strong character, and cheerful disposition. But now Vika faced a serious problem. She had only been in the United States for three months, and her English was extremely weak. Because of this, she decided to find a job as a junior accountant to improve her language skills. She went to the library, borrowed several books on accounting to find the necessary specialized terms, as well as a resume writing guide. Vika had never had to write a resume before, but she figured there's a first time for everything. To her surprise, she managed to put together her first resume relatively quickly. She omitted her high-level position from her previous job but highlighted her key skills and knowledge. Not realizing that her resume might look strange or even comical, given the differences in language structures between Russian and English, Vika printed 100 copies. She then bought 100 envelopes and placed stamps on them. That evening, her husband saw the stack of envelopes and was about to say that she might have gone overboard, but changed his mind. Knowing his wife, he understood that this was her usual approach to any task, so he left the pile of envelopes without comment. The next day, Vika bought several newspapers, browsed the job ads, and selected all the ones that included the words accountant and bookkeeper. Later, she stuffed all 100 envelopes into the mailbox and waited for phone calls. The main thing is to know when and where to go for the interview, Vika's husband advised. So listen carefully when they tell you the address and time of the meeting. Vika understood that she would be nervous during the phone conversation and would likely forget what to focus on. So, to avoid this, she wrote two big words on a piece of paper, where and when, and attached it to the wall near the phone as a reminder. The phone rang for the first time. Vika jumped, sprang from her chair, picked up the receiver, and heard a pleasant male voice, I read your resume, it is very impressive. You have a lot of experience. Vika understood what he was saying but couldn't tell if it was a question or just a statement. So all she could respond with was, yes. Yes. Thinking that such an answer would fit any situation. I would like to invite you for an interview, how about next week, the man asked. Vika guessed that he wanted to schedule a meeting. She was very nervous and, just in case, said again, yes. Yes. Vika was so excited about the potential interview that she missed everything the man said afterward. She snapped out of her daydream only when the receiver emitted, very well then. I look forward to seeing you. Goodbye. Yes. Yes. Vika almost shouted not even realizing that the line was already dead. She was in shock, holding the phone in her hand and staring at the words written right in front of her, where? When? That evening, when her husband came home from work, Vika tearfully told him what had happened. Don't worry, he smiled, hugging her. We'll get through this minor setback. Vika's husband was a master problem solver. He connected the phone to a tape recorder so Vika could record every phone conversation. In those days, answering machines didn't exist yet. The second phone call didn't take long. Vika turned on the tape recorder and picked up the receiver. Thanks to the recording, this time she knew where and when she needed to go. She was invited to an employment agency. A gentleman of about 35 approached her with a broad, friendly smile, showing off his perfect 32 white teeth which made Vika envious. Three months ago, when she was still in Ukraine, Vika had paid a colossal sum to a dentist to make her teeth look nice. But the doctor had crowned her teeth with gold, aging her by a good hundred years. Since then, Vika was embarrassed to show her once attractive smile, covering her mouth with her hand. Vika couldn't take her eyes off his incredibly white teeth when he asked, 
What salary are you looking for? This was an incredibly improper question by the standards of the former Soviet Union, where Vika had lived for 35 years. There, work was done for the common good of the country, not for personal gain. Vika blushed, not knowing how to answer. Seeing her embarrassment, the man asked a leading question, how much did you earn in your previous job? Vika found it difficult to answer. By law, her salary was 130 rubles per month, equivalent to 50 US dollars. However, her boss allowed her to work one and a half shifts, and although overtime was not allowed, the controlling authorities turned a blind eye. As a result, Vika earned 200 rubles per month. She hesitated, unsure of what amount to mention. After a brief pause, she finally said, 130 rubles. Per hour, the gentleman asked. Vika didn't understand what per hour meant, so she nervously clarified, 130 rubles a month. The gentleman's eyes widened in surprise, and Vika immediately regretted not mentioning the extra 70 rubles. He scribbled something on a piece of paper and then asked, What is your status? Vika had heard this word before during the immigration process but had forgotten what it meant. Her mind frantically searched for the right answer. Status. Status. What is my status? Suddenly, she had a revelation, refugee. Vika exclaimed, almost gasping for breath. The gentleman looked at her strangely and commented, Hmm, interesting. Then he made a few more notes and said something, smiling warmly. Vika didn't understand, but seeing his smile, she felt encouraged and thought, He likes me. She didn't know what to do next, so she stammered, When? Do I a work? Start? The gentleman said something, but the only word Vika caught was, wait. She nodded, left the office, and, sitting in a chair in the corridor, began to wait. The wait was agonizingly long. The gentleman exited his office many times, accompanied by various people, completely ignoring Vika. She grew tired of waiting and was irritated that she had left her children with a neighbor for a couple of hours but had been away the entire day. Vika didn't think it would take so long. When the workday ended, the gentleman emerged from his office wearing a coat. Vika stood up and blocked his path. She looked at him with eyes full of questions. At first, he ignored her, but when she didn't move, he finally looked at her, and his eyes widened, recognizing the morning's visitor. What are you doing here? he asked in surprise. Wait, Vika replied. Go home. Wait home, he said, enunciating each syllable with a touch of irritation. Then he squeezed past her and disappeared through the front door, leaving Vika alone in the empty corridor. Vika was upset about the wasted day but didn't fall into despair, it wasn't in her nature. She had another interview at a hotel the next day. As she approached the hotel, Vika reached out to open the door, which suddenly swung open before her. A doorman in an elegant uniform with a broad smile on his face stood at the entrance. Vika looked at him in surprise. She was sure she had never met him before and was struck by his smile, no one in Ukraine smiled at strangers. He must have mistaken me for someone else, Vika thought and recited her rehearsed line, I'll have an interview in the accounting department. The doorman explained where to go, gesturing with his hand, and Vika nodded and headed in the indicated direction. The secretary invited Vika into an office with the word, controller, written in large letters on the door. Inside, a middle-aged man was diligently and quickly inputting numbers into a calculator, without looking up. Vika stood waiting. She watched the rapid movements of his fingers and thought, not bad, guy. But I could do it much faster and more elegantly. Still, considering your fingers are as thick as sausages, you're doing pretty well. I'd give you a solid B+. Vika shifted from foot to foot, unsure of how to act. It seemed the man wasn't even aware of her presence. How long am I going to stand here like a statue? Vika thought with some irritation. Maybe I should compliment him on his ability to calculate so quickly? Then at least he'll invite me to sit down. Your ace. Vika said, but to his ears, it sounded like your ass. His fingers suddenly froze. He looked up and stared at Vika in surprise and indignation. What did you say? He asked emotionally, clearly trying to process what he had just heard. Oh my god. 
Is that such an amazing compliment that he's reacting so strongly? Vika thought, and unaware of the misunderstanding, she repeated with an even wider smile, your ace. Hearing your ass, again from the pleasant-looking woman, the man was completely flustered. His face turned red, and he tried to leap out of his chair, but his rear was so wide that the chair seemed glued to him. After a moment, he plopped back into the chair, which creaked pitifully under his weight. He pushed against the armrests, squeezed his wide behind between them, and finally freed himself from the chair, rushing out of the room, leaving behind an incredibly foul-smelling trail. Immediately after, the secretary entered the room and asked indignantly, what did you tell him? Vika realized she had said something wrong but didn't know what, so she responded, I? No. I said nothing. The secretary angrily pointed to the door, get out. And Vika understood that her interview was over before it even started, though she didn't know why. That evening, she told her husband about her failure with a sad face. He listened silently, trying hard not to burst into laughter. His English might not have been great, but when it came to inappropriate words and expressions, he was a true ace. Which, as he explained to Vika, sounded like sace, in English, not has. Unfortunately, he only enlightened her about the pronunciation of this dangerous word but didn't explain how it was spelled. The next day, another agent called, a man with a pleasant voice, who promised quick employment. Following her husband's advice, Vika no longer tried to improvise and strictly answered the questions asked. The agent asked her to make changes to her resume and send an updated copy. He explained in detail what specific changes were needed, and by the end of the conversation, Vika realized that there wasn't a single correct phrase in her resume, and 70% of the words contained errors. In other words, the resume she had sent to a hundred different companies was nearly impossible to understand. The agent dictated his address, which included the name of his company, Brooke Association. Vika easily understood the surname Brooke, but had trouble with the word association, both in pronunciation and spelling. So, Vika decided to write it in short form. And Brooke Association turned into a Brooke ass. The new resume was promptly sent, and that agent never called her back. Another phone call caught Vika while she was preparing dinner for her family. She wiped her hands on her apron and quickly headed to the living room. Where? When she muttered under her breath, trying to focus. Where? When? These words stared at her from the wall above the loudly ringing phone. She picked up the receiver and heard a male voice again. Why do only men call me, she thought. It seems like in the States, all men do is hang around on the phone and work with their tongues. Vika was used to women working in offices in Ukraine, where language skills were required, while men mostly worked with their muscles or brains. Strange division of labor here, she thought, and turned on the tape recorder. The man asked her a few questions, to which she invariably answered, yes. Yes. Then, in his brief speech, she heard the coveted word interview, and out of excitement, all the English words suddenly got mixed up in her head. Take, give, should, would, department, apartment, your, mine. Would you take me to your apartment? Vika asked, trembling with nervousness, meaning to say, give me your department's address? Excuse me, the surprised man asked after a brief pause. Vika panicked, AA. Ah. Uh, MA. Ah. Uh, address, please, she blurted out. Her temples were pounding so hard that she felt sure the sound could be heard through the receiver on the other end. Oh. Sure. Are you ready to write it down? He responded slowly, and, as it seemed to her, with a smile. Yes. Yes. Vika replied, having no idea what he had asked, hoping to rely on the tape recording. The man slowly dictated the company's address and concluded, so, I'll see you tomorrow at 9 a.m. Yes. Yes. Vika said again like a wind-up toy, holding her breath, and sank into the chair, exhaling with relief when she heard the short beeps of the disconnected call. That evening, her husband returned from work, and they listened to the recording of Vika's conversation with the gentleman together. Suddenly, their apartment filled with her husband's loud laughter. He was gasping for breath, while Vika looked at him in bewilderment, not understanding what had gotten into him. Finally, catching his breath, he said, you asked him to take you to his apartment. 
No wonder he invited you for an interview. What man would refuse that? Ha! 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 Shut up. My nerves are already on edge. Vika said, waving a kitchen towel at her husband. He grabbed her hand, still laughing, and pulled her close. Come on. We'll get through this minor setback. The next morning, Vika sat in the office of a 60-year-old man, Mr. Balji. He examined her resume intently, as if it were the most difficult crossword puzzle of his life, occasionally scratching his temple with his index finger and biting his lower lip when he got stuck. From time to time, a look of enlightenment would appear on his face, after which he would ask a question to which a yes or a no answer was required, clearly understanding that this was the only type of question Vika could respond to. Are you familiar with the general ledger? Yes. Yes. Do you understand what vendors are? Yes. Yes. With each question, Vika felt her heart begin to beat faster, but all she could do was repeat her standard response, yes. Yes. It became her mantra, a lifeline in the chaos of unfamiliar words, although she really wanted to say something else. Can you calculate payroll? Yes. Yes. For a while, he stared intently at something in the resume before finally raising his eyes to Vika with excitement. You know how to do bank reconciliation, he said triumphantly. Yes, Vika replied cautiously, not understanding why such a simple task as bank reconciliation impressed him so much. Finally, Mr. Balji put the resume aside and began talking at length about the company. To Vika's surprise, she understood what he was saying but couldn't figure out why he was telling her all this. What difference does it make what the company does? Debits and credits balance the same for any business, as does preparing financial statements. Damn it! Did I mix something up, and they don't need an accountant, but some kind of clerk? But then why did he ask about the general ledger? These Americans are enough to drive you crazy. They don't even know what they want. However, following her husband's advice, Vika smiled politely, nodded her head, and each time he threw out another, you know, she seriously replied, yes, I know. She had no idea these were just filler words. As a result, each time he said them, she sincerely thought he was continuing to test her knowledge, and, taking a risk, she repeated, yes, I know, even though she had no idea what she was supposed to know. Oh God. When will this nightmare end? Vika thought. He's not a young man anymore, yet he remembers all the questions he needs to ask so well. I'm envious. Maybe I do know all this, but heaven help me if he asks something specific and I don't understand a thing he's muttering about. After Vika had said a yes, I know about 30 times, Mr. Balji pompously concluded, I'll let you know about our decision after I consult with the president of the company. Vika left his office, convinced that she had failed the interview. She thought that if she wasn't praised immediately but was only promised a call, she would likely be waiting for that call until the second coming. Her husband was waiting for her in the car and eagerly began asking questions. But seeing her downcast look, he didn't press and drove her home. All the way, one phrase kept running through Vika's mind, yes, I know, although she had no idea what she was supposed to know. Her husband left for work, and Vika, after feeling a bit down, cheered herself up and loudly said to herself, well then. I'll wait for the responses to the other 96 resumes. The phone rang again, and Vika quickly grabbed the receiver, turning on the tape recorder at the same time. Is this Vika? The man asked. Yes. Yes, she nervously blurted out her usual response. Are you looking for a job? Yes. Yes. Fantastic. I have a job for you. The man began explaining something that Vika took to be job responsibilities. She listened, trying to figure out how his words related to her resume. However, she only understood that he was talking about some kind of performance. He must be in show business, Vika thought. These Americans talk about their business as if I care, she decided, and continued listening. How much do you weigh? The man suddenly asked. Vika froze in confusion and hesitantly replied, 65. You're joking, right? He chuckled. No, Vika answered, still unaware that he expected to hear her weight in pounds, while she was used to kilograms. Have you ever danced? He asked. 
Vika froze, realizing that he had asked a question, but she couldn't understand why he was asking about dancing. And then it hit her, danced sounds like balance. Of course. I'm fool. She thought to herself. And immediately, with relief and confidence, she replied, of course. There is no accounting without a balance, she said confidently. Forget about accounting, the man suddenly said on the other end of the line. No. Vika didn't miss here, and she understood this well. What does this idiot want from me? She thought irritably as the man continued to speak excitedly about something. Vika listened silently, and suddenly realized that he was persuading her to work in a strip club. Vika cursed silently in anger, all I need now is some pervert. She was about to hang up the phone, but suddenly hesitated, this guy has been talking to me for about five minutes, and despite my terrible English, he hasn't hung up. This is a unique opportunity to talk to an American and improve my English a bit. So, forget about the sixth resume of Vika. She encouraged herself. It's better to use this strange conversation as language practice than to waste another resume. After that, she relaxed and decided to continue the conversation more thoughtfully and without nerves. She settled comfortably into the chair and took out a pen and notebook, preparing to write down anything useful. Vika had many expressions in English that she had never dared to say out loud. Now she had the chance to see if an American would understand her. I have ten years of experience, Vika said. Dancing, he asked, getting excited that the conversation was finally going in the direction he wanted. Oh. He understood me. Great. Vika thought and continued, yes. With my experience, I can handle any kind of job. Wonderful. What do you mean by any? I dance, sing, play piano, calculate payroll, do accounts payable and receivable, and bank reconciliation, Vika replied with a smile. Great. Let's talk about dancing. How would you describe your body type, he asked. What do you mean? Vika asked. I mean. Hmm. Are you skinny? I'm not skinny. I'm normal, Vika replied. Great. Do you have a big ass? Vika nearly choked. She knew this word well. Her hand twitched, ready to hang up and end the conversation, but she restrained herself, this conversation is priceless. Hold on, Avika. She encouraged herself and answered shortly, I'm normal. Cool. Are your nipples hard and dark? Vika had no idea what he was asking about. Nipples hard and dark, she simply repeated and wrote the phrase down in her notebook. Great, he replied, thinking she had answered his question. Without waiting for his next question, Vika, deciding to take control of the conversation, asked, Can I ask you a couple of questions? Sure, go ahead, he responded. How much do you pay? This question was the most challenging, not in pronunciation but in meaning. For Vika, it was important to learn how to freely discuss such topics. The guy chuckled and responded with bravado, We pay enough, baby. Trust me. Great. But how much do you pay? Vika asked, happy that she was understood but still feeling uncomfortable. Twenty-five dollars, he answered. Twenty-five dollars per day? Vika clarified. No, baby. Twenty-five dollars per hour. Vika wrote down his answer in her notebook and only then realized the amount. Wow. She thought. So I can earn in one day what I used to make in a month in accounting. Maybe I should really consider stripping, she chuckled to herself and thought about the next question she might ask during the interview if needed. Do I have to dress up or dress down? Vika asked. You can dress however you want. Just make sure you look sexy, he replied. Great. Vika responded with satisfaction and then read aloud what she had written in her notebook, I'm sure I would be a great asset to your company. It was important for her to pronounce the word asset correctly. You mean in dancing, the guy asked. He understood me. Great. Vika thought with satisfaction and continued, does your company offer any classes that I could take to improve my skills? Classes, he asked, surprised. 
Yes, I'd like to learn more, Vika replied. Sure, I can give you a lesson right now if you're up to it, he offered. Okay, Vika agreed, still unaware of where this could lead. Are you wearing your underwear, he asked. Underwear? Vika didn't understand. What is underwear? He laughed. Oh. It's the cloth that you put under your dress. Oh. Under. Wear. Okay. Thanks. Vika said, making a note in her notebook, and then answered, yes. I am wearing my underwear. Do you want to take it off? Vika was puzzled by the question but managed to stay calm. Even my husband has never asked me such questions. This conversation is priceless, she thought and asked, why do I have to take my underwear off? Vika was happy that she managed to ask such a complex question on the spot. If you keep your underwear on, you won't be able to take my class, came the reply from the phone. Interesting. How simple these Americans are with their language, underwear off, underwear on. In Russian, you'd twist your tongue just to say the same thing. Vika made a brief note in her notebook and heard the next question, is it off? Yes, it's off, she lied, writing down the new phrase. I'm starting to like this language, she thought as she heard the next question. Are you comfortable, the guy asked. Yes, Vika answered, unaware of the consequences. Good. Now, place your hand on your thing, he said. Vika understood perfectly what he meant, but it seemed strange to her that he called it a thing. What thing should I put my hand on, she asked, slowly considering each word. She heard his heavy breathing, and it dawned on her, oh my god. What do I do? I still don't know what thing means. Do you mean the thing between your legs, or something else? Vika asked, stuttering. My legs, he asked, surprised. Yes, is a chair or underwear a thing a too? Are you kidding me, he asked irritably. You said to put my hand on my thing, right? So, which one are you talking about? Forget about it, he snapped. Oh. He understood me. Vika thought with joy and asked again, so, is a chair a thing? What does a chair have to do with anything, he said irritably. So, he did understand me after all. Vika thought and resolutely continued, you said you'd give me a lesson. So, is a chair a thing like the other a thing? Fuck you, he shouted into the phone, and the dial tone left Vika without an answer. What did he say at the end? Probably nothing good. Oh well, the lesson wasn't wasted and Vika thought, pleased with herself. Vika spent another half hour searching the dictionary for the definitions of the words, thing, and a fuck you, but she still couldn't find answers to her questions. The phone rang again. She was so engrossed in her research that she had forgotten about her job search. Seeing the note, where? When, on the wall, she snapped back to reality. Vika picked up the phone and was surprised at how she answered the call. Vika is speaking, wow. That lesson wasn't for nothing. She thought with satisfaction. Good afternoon, Vika. This is Mr. Balji. As soon as she heard his name, all the words immediately disappeared from her memory. Yes. Yes, she replied, and her heart started pounding in her chest. I'd like to offer you a bookkeeping position in our company. We are offering you $17,000 per year, and you will have a six-hour working day. Do you need time to think about it? Yes. Yes. Vika answered, not even noticing the question. When do you want me at your apartment, she asked, and in the next second, she was struck by shock. She blurted out, department. When? There was silence on the other end. Mr. Balji was pondering what he had just heard. So, are you accepting my offer, he finally asked slowly. Yes. Yes. Vika shouted. Fantastic. I'll see you tomorrow in our department, he said slowly, emphasizing each syllable before hanging up. Vika was ecstatic. She felt a powerful energy surging through her, ready to burst out like an erupting volcano. Barely containing her excitement, she dialed her husband's work number. I got an offer. 
I got an offer, she shouted into the phone. A bookkeeping job. Six hours a day. Seventeen thousand dollars. Vika rattled off, her voice trembling with excitement. She felt like seventeen thousand dollars a year was far more than twenty-five dollars an hour. It wasn't until several months later that Vika realized how much she was really earning. After dividing her salary by 12 months and deducting expenses for a nanny and gas, adding her husband's income, and finding out that their combined income put them in a higher tax bracket, Vika realized that she was left with only $100 a month, about the same amount she earned in Ukraine. But today, Vika was jumping for joy. She could hear her husband's soft laughter on the other end of the line. Vika was so excited that she couldn't do anything, so she paced around the apartment like a lioness in a cage, eagerly awaiting her husband's return. Two hours later, the phone rang again. Vika didn't care anymore. She had secured a job, and that was all that mattered. She ignored the note, where? When, and picked up the phone. This is Mr. Balji, Vika heard, and her heart sank. Did he change his mind? She thought in fear. Yes, Mr. Balji, Vika replied. Vika, I was looking at your resume more closely and discussed it with the president of the company. We came to the conclusion that you are more qualified for a higher position than just an accountant. Would you be interested in becoming a full-charge bookkeeper instead? Yes. Yes. Vika said, excitement bubbling in her chest. We can't give you more money, but I think it's better for you to have a higher position. Yes. Yes. Excellent. In that case, I'll see you to MRO at our department. He pronounced the last words slowly again, emphasizing each syllable. After putting the kids to bed, Vika snuggled up to her husband and asked in English, Are you comfortable, baby? He looked at her in surprise. Vika had never spoken to him in English before, especially in such a sultry tone. He couldn't imagine what would happen next. Mr. Balji called me again. He offered me a higher position, she said dreamily. So? Baby. I'm a full-charge bookkeeper. He said that I have excellent experience. I'll see him tomorrow in his department. Her husband wanted to say something, but Vika silenced him by placing a finger on his lips. Now. Forget about accounting. I have a job for you, she said, pushing him onto the bed. He fell onto his back and looked at his wife with astonished eyes. I'll give you a dance lesson. Vika spent the rest of the day after talking to Mr. Balji listening to her steamy phone conversation and memorizing the new phrases she had recorded. Now she pronounced them slowly and clearly. Her husband watched her in amazement with a wide smile, obediently following all her commands. Vika had never seen him so happy before, and for him, this behavior of his wife was a true sensation. I have ten years of experience, she said, swaying her hips and turning seductively. I can sing. I can dance. I have a good body type. I'm not thin. I'm normal. And I have a big sexy ass. Vika took her husband's hand and placed it on her but while simultaneously licking his nose with her tongue. He gasped in surprise. Oh, baby, Avika murmured, my nipples are dark and hard, like your thing. She took off her bra and threw it on the floor. Are you comfortable? Do you have your underwear on? Take it off. Just do it. Vika said, removing her panties and tossing them in the opposite direction from the bra. I don't know where this is coming from, her husband exclaimed excitedly, but I like it. I took my underwear off. Now, honey, put your hand on my thing that's between my legs. His eyes widened, and his jaw dropped. He never imagined that his usually shy wife was capable of such a performance. Vika used all her new vocabulary. She had only one word left that she couldn't find in the dictionary. The man had used this word without any other context, but Vika felt she knew what it might mean. Now, baby, she said, I would appreciate it if you explain or show me what the Russian for fuck you is. He pulled her close, and the last word Vika learned that evening was, with pleasure.